In today's video, we're going to go through the results of a fascinating study called Women Can Judge Sexual Unfaithfulness from Unfamiliar Men's Faces. I'll put a link below if anybody wants to read the study for themselves, but it's fascinating what they did. The researchers took all of these images. They had photos of 101 men's faces and 88 women's faces, and half of them of each gender had committed infidelity in the past. So they showed all these images to men and women and then got them to rate them on factors of how attractive the face were, how masculine the face was for men, how feminine for women, and also the likelihood that that person would be a cheater. And guess what? Women were pretty damn accurate. Like it was scary. They were often able to tell whether or not a man was likely to commit infidelity just by his face. Statistically, it should just be 50%. Like women are going to guess it right 50% of the time and they're going to guess it wrong 50% of the time. But actually they were only wrong 38% of the time. Reading from the study, our results demonstrate that accurate judgments of unfaithfulness can be made from the face alone. In absence of behavioral cues. So you think, okay, that's kind of impressive, I guess, but I'm sure that men are going to be able to do it as well. They're going to have a similar you know, rate of success, but actually it turns out, no, men were absolutely horrible at this. Even if they're just randomly guessing by blind luck, they should only be wrong 50% of the time, but men were wrong 77% of the time. They're so bad at it. Women had a success rate of 62%. Men had a success rate of 23%. Why? Why are men so hopeless at this task? Well, it turns out that when trying to guess whether or not a woman is going to be unfaithful based just on her face, men were judging it on the completely wrong criteria. We had it all backwards. This is what the study says. Results provide little evidence for accuracy in men's assessments of female unfaithfulness. Correlations of their unfaithfulness ratings with women's cheating and poaching were small and non-significant. Attractiveness and femininity were highly correlated with unfaithfulness ratings and each other, indicating that men perceived attractive, feminine and women as likely to be unfaithful. However, there was no evidence that they were. Attractive women were rated as more trustworthy. In layman's terms, men assume that if a woman's face was highly attractive and highly feminine, then she's more likely to commit infidelity. But he was so wrong about that. It's such a projection. It's such a man's way of viewing things. The idea that the only reason why a person wouldn't just sleep around and commit infidelity is because their looks are holding them back. There's probably a bunch of guys out there who are monogamous and not having affairs, but they're probably just too ugly to actually generate much interest in women. If they were some super gorgeous chat of a guy, they'd probably be sleeping around with lots of women. And so they assume women must be the same. Like, oh, if she's really attractive, really beautiful, then yeah, she's way more likely to be having affairs. I would as a man, but women are not like that. Whether or not a woman commits infidelity and cheats on her partner, it's not really ever going to be a matter of no opportunity because women are so in demand in the dating market that even ugly women are going to have plenty of opportunity to cheat if they could. In fact, I would probably make the case that an attractive woman with a very beautiful face may be less inclined to commit infidelity because for all the women who are having affairs because of a self-esteem deficiency, so they're seeking, you know, approval and validation in the arms of another man, a very beautiful woman is probably more likely to feel good about herself. And so she's not going to be driven to such desperate action of having to cheat on her partner and have an affair in order to feel good about herself. But men don't seem to understand that. That's why we're getting it wrong 77% of the time. We don't understand the reasons why women would have affairs, but women seem to understand us pretty well. But how did they do it? How did women get such a better success rate in these guesses? How were they able to predict which men were going to be cheaters just by looking at their faces? Well, what they did was they linked a man's likelihood for infidelity to his masculinity. And as it turns out, there was actually a pretty strong correlation. They guessed that the more masculine a man's face, the more likely he was to be a cheater. And they were right. Reading from the study, facial masculinity mediated women's accuracy. Masculinity ratings correlated significantly with both unfaithfulness ratings and the infidelity index. However, really important distinction is that having a masculine face did not necessarily mean that women found you attractive. The two were not the same thing. And whether or not you were good looking as a man did not correlate with infidelity. Reading from the study, attractiveness was not a mediator as it was unrelated to unfaithfulness or infidelity. So it didn't matter if you were really, really attractive as a man. That didn't mean that you would necessarily going to be a cheater. What mattered was how masculine your face was. Whether you're good looking or whether you're really ugly, it had to do with your facial masculinity. And of course, it's not a bad thing to have women perceive your face to be good looking. As the study says, women rated attractive men as more trustworthy, perhaps reflecting an attractiveness halo effect. And I've discussed the halo effect on this channel before. It's that tendency we have to project positive qualities onto people if we find them physically attractive. Good looking people, men and women, tend to get job promotions more, higher grades in school, 
rule, more lenient sentencings from judges in criminal cases. It's like we're incapable of admitting how shallow and superficial we are as a species. And so when we find somebody pleasant to look at, we can't just say, oh, I really like the way they look. No, we have to imagine that they're really good people as well. We project all these positive qualities onto them, even when there's no evidence. But we are left with this big question of why this is gendered, right? Like, why is it that women are able to guess reasonably accurately while men are so hopeless? Why should it be affecting one gender more than the other? Why has evolution given women this gift of being able to detect possible infidelity just by looking at the facial cues from a man? Well, here's what the study says. These judgments may be a perceptual adaptation for mate choice given the likely reproductive costs of unfaithful partners. It goes into more detail, but putting aside the academic talk for a moment, here's what in essence it's saying. The consequences for women, reproductively speaking, are so intense if she gets pregnant by the wrong man that of course evolution has specifically focused on that and given her skills and talents to be able to detect possible danger. The consequences for men are not nearly as dire as they are for women, so it makes sense that evolution didn't focus on men nearly as much. It's worthwhile reminding yourself that the differences that you can see in personality and behavior between men and women, even in the modern world, can draw their roots back to the fact that our experience of reproduction is very different. And so men and women have vastly different sexual strategies. Men can get women pregnant and it's not really a big deal. He can just sort of walk away. It's not going to harm his survival in any way. But for women, it's a massive deal. I mean, of course, you've got the physical complications that come with being a pregnant, the fact that you're raising a dependent child and you can't contribute or look after yourself so much because you're busy mothering, not to mention the fact that once you've had children, you're going to decrease massively in the eyes of other men as a potential partner, as somebody to mate with, and the reputational damage of sleeping with the wrong man or getting taken advantage of. It's just huge. And so women can't afford to be complacent about their sexual choices because the consequences can just be too big, too disastrous. They have to pay attention to who they're sleeping with. What she really wants, like the absolute epitome of her sexual strategy working well, is if she gets a really fantastic top tier man with amazing genetics to be the father and he's completely monogamous to her. He doesn't sleep with any other women and he protects and provides for her and her children. That's what she wants. But any deviation from that success is going to put her in danger. So if she gets pregnant by a man who happens to be a cheater, then it could be really terrible for her because he could be committing infidelity. He could be off getting other women pregnant. And that means that he could leave her for that woman. Or even if he sticks around, he's got to split his time and resources with her children and his other children. And so evolution has positively selected for women to be able to detect which men are likely to be cheaters. Those women who did have the skill of being able to tell just by facial cues which men were going to commit infidelity were much more likely to reproduce or at the very least their children were more likely to survive because they're being born into better circumstances. And this is what evolution does when that kind of trait has got a positive reward in terms of, yes, of seeing more and more of that in the gene pool and it keeps that good train running. However, it is a little bit of a mystery just why men were so bad at this, like why we were so clueless, why at the very least couldn't we just be 50% wrong? Why were we so spectacularly misguided in our guesses? Because it's not as though there's no consequence for men not being able to tell whether or not women are possible cheaters. Like obviously we don't have the survival impairment that comes from being pregnant and having dependent infants on us, but it is really terrible for a man to be a victim of paternity fraud and get cuckolded by another man, you know, raising another guy's children because your partner cheated on you. That's kind of being the world's biggest biological sucker. So if there are still pretty intense consequences for men, if their female partner cheats on them, you have to wonder why hasn't evolution positively selected for men to be able to tell which women are likely to cheat simply by looking at their face, you know, in the same way. Well, there's two possible explanations here. And the first is that there's really just no data to go off. You're not going to be able to tell whether or not a woman is likely to commit infidelity simply by her face. Because as we discussed earlier in the video, men and women cheat for different reasons. And so there's nothing really to judge. Even if you were an absolute expert at reading like facial cues and bone structure, and you knew women's faces better than anyone else on the planet, that's not necessarily going to give you an edge because unlike men, women don't commit infidelity based on their available options. It's not going to have the clues that you need. Yeah, good looking men are probably more likely to cheat because they're like, hey, I'm the man at the top of the pyramid. I'm awesome. Everyone thinks I've got great genetics. I'm going to spread my seed. But that's not what women are doing. That's just not their sexual strategy. However, I would hypothesize that because paternity uncertainty is a big deal for men, men would have picked up certain strategies to be able to tell whether or not a woman is likely to commit infidelity 
It just is not going to relate to facial cue. It's going to be a lot more based on behavior. And you can see evidence of this in the forms of like sexual jealousy that you find in men, you know, caring a lot about a woman's sexual history, behaviors and activities like mate guarding. Men do care. It's just that we know by looking at a woman's face, you're not going to be able to determine much. But by watching a woman's behavior, you're going to be able to learn a lot more. So I'll finish this video with a request. If anybody has ever come across a scientific study that judges men's capacity to detect infidelity in partners based on their behavior when compared to women's ability to do the same, I'd be very interested to do a follow-up video based on behavioral cues to this one. All this talk of paternity uncertainty and cheating and infidelity, it sort of serves as a poignant reminder of just how little trust we have in our fellow human beings. There's so much selfishness and greed and exploitation out there. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that we don't really consider ourselves to be a tribe anymore. You're likely to look at a stranger as an enemy as much as you are an ally. And it makes me wonder, what can we do to actually regain our moral center as a society? Do we need a new system of beliefs in order to be able to unify people? Is science going to have the answer? Is philosophy? Is religion? Do we need to be looking forwards to try and create something new? Or should we be looking backwards to our tradition? It's a big question. And it was a very long, long video that I created here on Patreon because it took a while to really tease all of this out. But if this is the kind of question that interests you, you want to see how these dating dynamics play into a much larger picture. That's the kind of nuance and depth that I go into on my Patreon videos. You probably aren't aware of this, but for every video I post here on YouTube, I post an additional bonus video on my Patreon, which means that at the moment you only have access to half of the content that I'm creating. If you'd like the other half, then it only costs $7. You get access to that video plus every other video in my back catalog. The value is absolutely tremendous. Also, if you're looking for some advice about your dating life or your relationships and you want to hit me up, get my thoughts, then come on to Hey Hero. Tell me what's going on in your life and I'll create a personalized video just for you. And lastly, if you're interested to understand how all this theory and concepts actually applies in real world situations, you want to check out my video 100 Sides of Women because that features real stories, real people. It's a series of quizzes, got 10 questions in each quiz, 10 stories, so 100 questions in total. That's why I've called it 100 Sides of Women. It's difficult to explain how it works, but I have made one of the video tests available as a free trial, so you don't need to pay anything. If you click on the link in the description box below, it'll take you to the video that explains how the whole thing works. It only costs $50. The value for money is amazing. The reviews have been so overwhelmingly positive. People who've done it absolutely love it. I recommend giving it a try.